So you know how I always tell you to bring a tool kit along, bring a survival kit along, be prepared when you go on your trips. Well today I'm going to show you exactly why you got to do that. So we're out here in Central Oregon and coming out this way I started having a problem where when I step on the gas my car would just almost die, it would just go to idle. And I looked it up, did a little Google search on it and uh, what comes up is the throttle position sensor. Now that's not so important to the video here. What is important is that when you're on the road and something goes wrong you can take it upon yourself to research what's going on. Like for example on this, I, 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 I put in 2002 GMC Yukon hesitation on acceleration. You could do any kind of wording like like uh, dies when I step on the gas or, or whatever and start reading what comes up and what kept coming up on this one was throttle position sensor. So in the last town we came through I went ahead and bought a new one, went to the auto parts store and I'm going to put it in. But what, able, what enables me to be able to do that is the fact that I bring a toolkit along too. So the point of this video isn't to show you how to replace a throttle position sensor. I'm going to show you the tools that I brought along. That's it. Well, we're not stranded in the desert this time. Well, the number one tool that I carry is the proper repair manual for your car. This is the kind you get at any auto parts store or you can order them on Amazon. Haynes or Chilton's brand. For example, just on what I did today, replacing that throttle position sensor, it was really just this much. Not very much and, and some great photographs to go along with it. So this is the first thing you should get. Well, probably the most expensive part of your toolkit is going to be your socket set. You can buy a socket set kit and then just add some other things to it. For example, this is 3 8 drive with this ratchet wrench and an ad adapter here so you can unscrew things by hand. A couple of extensions and a universal joint to help you get into those weird areas. There's the regular socket, everything is metric on today's cars. My Yukon is all metric. But these are the metric sockets in, in 3 8 drive to fit that wrench. These are deep sockets in 3 8 drive, deep, deep uh, metric sockets. This is for when you got a, 
a long stud to get over when you got when the nut is deep down and you got a long stud sticking up. That's what the deep sockets are for. These aren't going to come in your socket kit. These are um, are impact sockets, and the reason I carry these is because once in a while you get to where you've got a really really tough bolt or a really tough nut to get off, and you break these because they're thin walled. Whereas the impact sockets are meant to take that stress. So I carry these and I use them a lot. These are Torx bits, both 3 8 drive and quarter inch drive. And these are for those weird looking screws that are under the hood and all over your car. So it pays to have a good set of Torx bits, a good set, because the cheap ones strip. And of course, a quarter inch socket set, and you use this a lot. These are all quarter inch drive, you know, from about six millimeter up to, this one's 14. This is for the smaller stuff, but boy is it handy not to have to use the big wrenches on the small stuff. And of course then there's a couple of different extensions for it and another universal for it. So the, the quarter inch drive set, the 3 8 drive set, the 3 8 drive sockets, both the deep sockets and the, and the uh, regular sockets, are probably going to be included in a socket wrench kit. Once again, I had to add the impact sockets and I had to add the Torx bits here. This represents probably the biggest expense of your kit. And some basic screwdrivers. These are all different. There's flat head, or flat bladed, excuse me, flat bladed screwdrivers. I carry three different sizes. This big one doubles as a pry bar sometimes or just to wiggle things out or get at things you know sometimes I just use this this one is like multi-purpose so there's three different size flat blade screwdrivers and I carry two different size Phillips head screwdrivers that's the name of the one with a cross point on it I carry the medium size and I carry the regular size and of course there's a smaller one and there's a bigger one, but I don't, never, I don't usually find a use for them on my car. Some various pliers. As you can see, my tools are well used. Some of them are as old as I am. Some of them are even older. <laughs> Anyways, there's a pair of channel locks here. This is a medium, pair, medium uh, size pair of channel locks. Never leave home without vice grips. Never. Side cuts or wire cutters. And needle nose pliers. I carry two different sizes. I carry two different crescent wrenches an 8 inch and a 6 inch. For doing electrical work, I carry a pair of wire strippers. and connector crimpers. Sometimes it comes on the same tool. I prefer to use the, this set because I can get more pressure on these when I squeeze them down. This is when you do put on those yellow connectors, those blue connectors, red connectors. This is what crimps those down. A magnet. I just use this today. You know what this is for? This is for when you drop those nuts and bolts on top of your engine block and you gotta fish them out of tight spaces. These are called combination wrenches because they're open on one end and boxed on the other end. Open end, box end. And these go from 6 millimeter up to 19 millimeter. You should have a good set of combination wrenches. This is a different type of combination wrench that I like to carry. It's open end on one end, boxed down on the other, but this end is ratcheted. It makes it so you don't have to keep taking the wrench. You don't have to keep taking the wrench off of the nut. These are really handy at times. 
beyond that I have an assortment of things that come in handy. A voltage tester. Some various electrical connectors and fuses. Just an assortment. You can buy an assortment at the auto parts store. Wire ties, just in case. This tool is for is for pulling off spark plug wires. It grabs the rubber boot and pulls it off. So you don't damage the wire, you can grab the boot itself. And it also protects your hands from the heat of the engine. Some kind of grease. I like this one, it's real clean. Super lube, you can use it for everything from your the ball hitch on the trailer to uh, anything else you need to grease. Good stuff, been using it for years. Don't leave home without shoe goop. It's like the vice grips. You need shoe goop. This is a sealer. It seals everything from your shoes to your trailer. Any any holes that are leaking. <laughs> Good stuff. You also need duct tape. Don't, don't forget that. Some kind of silicone. Pays to have some electrical tape too. There's a lot of other things you can carry with you, of course. There's tire repair items and things like that. Windshield washer fluid, you know. But basically the things I showed you today were for doing repairs on your engine and repairs on your car body, repairs on your trailer. Just a, a basic kit of tools. And that kit I've refined over a lot of years. And it does it, is everything in there? Absolutely not. But there's uh, things in there that get me out of most any situation that I've been in. Anyways, if you like this video, please like it, you know, give it that thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you around.